When I read it, it gives me the, the power, the strength, the endurance I need to keep running and pursuing it. It is in those moments that I lapse into having a pity. Again, the topic that we're going to use is it's just a matter of time. Amen. Amen. And we have to make sure we understand the right time. Amen. We have to know that it's God's time. Amen. It's God's purpose. Amen. And we have to line up with that and we have to accept that. Amen. As we approach what he has called us to approach. God balances life, birth to death, sorrow to joy, meeting to parting. Why does he do this? For two reasons so that we will not think we can easily explain his works God will sometimes throw you off and two so that we learn to accept and enjoy what we have there are moments that will cause you to pause and begin to count your blessings amen amen because it can be so difficult sometimes that the only solace that you can find the only comfort you can find is in counting what you do have and acknowledging that it could have been worse God has set eternity in our hearts if you look at that chapter in the 11th verse this means that the things of the world can never really satisfy us we're always approaching something that's greater and a lot of times people spend their lives trying to fill that void and this is why a lot of people get caught up in a lot of different things that are not in compliance with the word of God because they're literally trying to pursue things on the earth that can only be fulfilled eternally amen so God has placed that void in our heart that only he can fill and when you, when you admit that you are a sinner, believe that Christ died for your sins and God raised him from the dead, then you confess him as your Lord and Savior, then you get to a point where you understand, amen, that he's the only one that can give you that peace. Is there anybody in the church or watching online that can testify that, that he can give you peace that no one else can give you? He can comfort you like no one else can comfort you. He can help you like no one else can help you. Yes, as a result of the truth, we find God's will for our lives and let him mix the ingredients according to his purpose. He works all things together for the good of those that love the Lord and for those who are called according to his purpose. So don't discount a bad experience. You have to have an opportunity or you do have the opportunity to allow that to be a teachable moment because there are some things I can learn in the fiery furnace of affliction that I can't learn outside of it but what I learn while I'm in it will help me when I get out of it amen and so we have to seek God in the midst of these experiences that we have amen let's exegete this text so it says to everything there is a season that word season or means a particular or proper time in the future that is specified as the time something will happen to your neighbor God has a time for everything and sometimes God will obscure it amen and that's why we get frustrated sometimes because we don't know exactly when he's going to do it but through faith we know he's going to do it but we don't know when and we don't know how he's going to do it but 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 we just know through faith he's going to do it but then we are tormented literally by the vision of him doing it and the promise of him doing it we are tormented by it because it seems to be on delay amen and that's the frustration frustrating part sometimes uh, what God has ordained what God has promised will often be on delay but what do you do when God says delay but he didn't say deny you have to trust in him and continue to pursue what he told you yes purpose that word in the original means a vaguely specified matter it includes and states or events and processes among other things so 
a time for every purpose under the heaven. So again, there's a process, events, and the process entails a lot of moments and a lot of events, and God will favor you and chain your favor together. Chain your blessings together. And as he chains those blessings and that favor together, as he begins to lead you and guide you, amen, as he shuts one door, he sends you to a better and greater door, amen. And that's how he begins to funnel you to the right place. And that's why the Bible says, seek until you find, knock until the door is open unto you. You have to make sure that you seek and then find, and then you got to knock. It's a progression in the process. I can't just give up because I didn't get what I wanted. I can't just just stop because God didn't move when I wanted him to move. I can't just give up and retreat because it didn't work out the way I wanted it to work out. Ultimately, what the devil meant for evil, God made it good. How many people can testify that it looked evil but God shifted it, God changed it, and he made it good. He can make things good that appear to be bad. God is able. Yes. The first point is a time to perceive perceive means to become aware or conscious of something come to realize or understand it and we talked about this text Habakkuk 2 and 2 in Sunday school then the Lord answered me and said write the vision and make it plain on tablets this is the new King James version and so we have to perceive it first but then to write it means to communicate or express by writing that's why it's important that you write down the vision Yes, write down, amen, what God has revealed to you. Write down the impartation. Write down the revelation because we're so finite, amen. We can sometimes have amnesia because of the difficult circumstances that we're dealing with. The devil's job is to make you forget what God promised you because when you forget what God promised you, it produces desperation and desperate people do desperate things. And when you do desperate things, you'll find yourself in destitute and broken situations. I need to trust God in the midst of all the chaos that's going on in my life and remember what he promised me ask your neighbor do you remember did you write it down or did you just say I'm gonna hold no write it down and make it plain God is a God of order details matter to God amen we have to make sure that we pursue God in an orderly manner God says let everything be done decently and in order but we want God to bless a mess I need God to give me something where I can have organization in my life I need to have my priorities straight so I can be in a position the Bible says uh, that seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness that means my pursuit of being like Christ my pursuit of being Christ like my pursuit of denying myself picking up my cross and following Jesus has to be the preeminent huh? the preeminent amen resource amen and the preeminent influence in my life if it doesn't line up with his word I can't do it it's just that simple and so vision write the vision and make it plain on tablets a vision is a religious or mystical experience of a supernatural appearance that imparts a message often in dream a tablet was a slab of stone or or wood suitable for bearing an inscription amen we have a lot of different ways to write things down now and i was i was at melania's uh competition yesterday thank god they got first place again glory to god Amen. Her cheering competition. Amen. And so I begin to go back and look at mine because my prayer list is digital. And so it's through Lagos Bible software. I can go back and look at the dates I prayed for something when I first started praying. And I can see the date that God answered it. And I began to go back. And I looked at so many things connected to this church and connected to my life connected to the things we were trying to do and in some cases God said no and I said God said no so I moved on to the next thing amen but one thing I, I noticed amen is that God gave me a vision for this church as I wrote my thesis for my doctor of ministry degree it was over 125 pages amen very detailed and I wrote it down amen and I had to defend that thesis to Dr. Uh, Jerry Graves and Dr. Wheeler I had to defend amen the content of of that thesis amen in order for me to be be determined or deemed to be a doctor of ministry and so in that I look back often and see the things 
things that God revealed to me back in 2018 and 19 as I was writing and I see how God is slowly but surely bringing those things to pass there are certain things that were written amen that are yet to come to pass but this is what God inspired me with this is what God revealed to me so it's been written down on tables on paper amen it's both amen in a physical state and also in an electronic state so even if my my writing gets burnt up I still have a way to go back and most importantly it's on my heart amen so instead of claiming it and declaring it you better write it down amen next so now we are to perceive it amen but next we are to to pursue it a time to pursue pursue means to seek to attain or accomplish a goal over a long period that he may run who reads it to run is to move fast by using one's feet with, with one's foot off the ground at any given time and so it lets me know that, that that when i read it it gives me the the power the strength the endurance i need to keep running and pursuing it it is in those moments that I lapse into having a pity party and saying, why me, Lord? Why didn't it happen to me? And you got to understand, it may appear that the evil people are prospering. It may appear that the enemy can bless, but the enemy can't bless nobody. It might uh, look nobody, but Jesus can bless us. Amen. You got to understand huh, that it might be a gift, but it's not a blessing because anything that comes from Satan can never be a blessing. He can't bless me and he can't bless you. Marcus D. Floyd Ministries Incorporated is a 501c3 tax exempt nonprofit organization. We are committed to contributing to our community, but we cannot do it without your help. Consider partnering with us so that we can collectively be used by God to bless many. With the help of our partners, we seek to advance God's kingdom by making a difference in the lives of his people all over the world. We are threaded together by our commitment to save the lost, help the hurting, and spread the gospel of Jesus Christ to the ends of the world. Partnership options are as follows. If your gift is at least $30 per month, you will become a pastor's team partner. A gift of at least $50 per month places you at the level of pastor's captain's partnership, and your additional support helps us extend our outreach further. You can also submit an immediate one-time advanced gift of $500 to qualify for pastor's captains. A gift of $100 per month or more allows you to ascend to the pastor's hall of famers level as you help undergird the works of this ministry. You can also submit an immediate one-time advanced gift of $1,000 to qualify for Pastor's Hall of Famer. Your partnership will allow Marcus D. Floyd Ministries to feed the hungry, help families and businesses that have been adversely affected. Through the generosity of our partners, we are also able to spread the gospel to the ends of the world by utilizing the power of media. All gifts are tax-deductible to the full extent allowed by law. Go to our website to learn more. And he may run who reads it to read us to say out loud something that is written. So I need to run and I need to say. I need to run and I need to say. I need to move and I need to talk. I need to see it, pursue it, and declare it. I need to know what I'm declaring and what I'm pursuing. So as I see it, I read it. Now I'm pursuing. The Bible says faith without works is dead being alone. So I need to know what it is that God has called me to seize. I need to know what it is that God has promised me. And if I know it, I can pursue it. Amen. I can speak it. You ought to declare right now that God has told me some things that I'm going to declare. And I'm not going to wait until it shows up. I'm going to praise him in advance. How many people have some real faith today? You don't mind praising God in advance for all the things he has promised you. He may not come when you want him to come, but you ought to tell your neighbor. He's always right on time. And yes, whipping may endure for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. This joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. And this joy that I have, the world cannot take it away because it's not contingent upon uh, it's not dependent upon uh, external circumstances uh, this uh, you got to understand it's intrinsically birth uh, it's birth from heaven uh, so it's going to sustain the yes uh, they that wait upon the Lord uh, shall renew their strength uh, they shall mount up with wings as eagles uh, they shall run and not be weary uh, they shall walk and not faint uh, how many people are waiting on the Lord today uh, you ought to say my waiting uh, my labor uh, is not in vain uh, he will reward me as I diligently seek him every step of the way he'll sustain you every step of the way he'll keep you every step of the way he'll cover you every step of the way he has something for you you want to say Lord thank you 
Yes. And so, but sometimes, I know we got to go, but I got to get this word out to you. Sometimes as we are reading, amen, and if we look at what we're reading too long, yes, we can trip over and fall. So you can't just be in the word and not be an influence in the world. See, sometimes uh, we are, are so, so focused on the things of God that we don't commit ourselves to working and fixing the things of the world. There's some people in our circle that God has assigned to us to witness to them, to, to win. Why is this a man that wins a soul? And people say witnessing is old-fashioned now. I don't have to tell them about the Lord. Well, 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 who's going to tell them if the church doesn't tell them? Who's going to witness to them if the church doesn't witness them? When is the last time you won someone to Christ? When is the last time you walked someone down the Roman road of salvation? I don't care if they don't want to hear it. You need to say it and then pray. Paul said, I plant Apollo's waters but God is the one that gives the increase but if no one plants it and no one waters how is God going to increase something that's never been planted in their hearts God is the one that will change their hearts So now I'm focused on reading. I'm focused on applying. Amen. And now it's time for me to prosper. To succeed in an enterprise or activity. That's what being prosperous means. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end it will speak. It will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it. Because it will surely come. It will not tarry. So an appointed time it's. A particular or proper time in the future that is specified as the time something will happen. Speak means to, to conceive of as breathing out. So it's the time that it will breathe out. And breath represents life. How do you know you're alive? You can breathe and you can tell you're alive. If you couldn't breathe, you couldn't move, you couldn't function, you're not living. Terry means to take longer to do something than planned, scheduled, or required. We map things out in our lives. And this is the reason why we become frustrated with the things of God. Because we put a time on God. We say within this time, I'm going to declare that this is going to happen. We forget it's about God's timing. Everything in his creation is on a timing. As long as the earth remains, there'll be seed time and harvest. That's why they can calculate with great equations, calculus, trigonometry, geometry, and all these different mathematical equations and, and formulas. That's why they can calculate that a space shuttle can take off at Cape Canaveral and go 17,000 miles per hour and dock with the space station at a certain time because God has created everything in order. That's why the earth turns and we go around, amen, the sun, amen within a 365 day period. That's why within 24 hours, that's why the earth turns all the way around. We got to understand that God has order. He has timing. Everything is on a rhythm. Your heartbeat is on a rhythm. Your inhale and exhale, they're all on a rhythm. Everything we do is on a rhythm. And the key thing, how do we find out what God's rhythm is for our lives? There's seed time that's working, that's sowing, that's dedicating, that's sacrificing, and then the harvest comes. But if you 
never sacrifice, if you never sow, if you never deny yourself, pick up your cross and follow Jesus. If you never seek his impartation, never seek his revelation, you'll never be in compliance. You'll never be in alignment with what he has ordained. But when I sacrifice and I remain in compliance with him, when people are trying to discourage me, situations and circumstances appear to dictate that God is not for me. I go through things that it's easy to give up on what God has promised, but I have enough faith to believe that if God ordained it, he will surely make it come to pass. I can't complain about it. I trust God to make it happen for me. And so it's going to tarry, but, but it's going to, to come to pass. To move forward, travel toward, or approach something or somebody, rather physically or as an abstraction, what God promised you is not a lie. It's the truth. Watch this. A study revealed that an average 70-year-old man has spent 24 years sleeping, 14 years working, 8 years in amusement, 6 years at the dinner table, 5 years in transportation, 4 years in conversation, 3 years in education, and 2 years in studying and reading. His other four years were spent in miscellaneous pursuits. Of those four years, he spent 45 minutes in church on Sundays, and five minutes were devoted to prayer each day. This adds up to a not at all impressive total of five months that have been devoted to God in that 70 year period. Even if this man had been a faithful church goer who attended Sunday school and, and three one hour services per week, he would have spent only one year and nine months in church out of 70 years. If you have a question about the arithmetic, sit down and figure out how you have been using your time. How large a portion of it for the things related to God. When you finish this exercise, ponder what Jesus said. What good will it be if a man gains the whole world and loses or forfeits his soul? So even the faithful who come every week at 70, that's one year and nine months you spent in church. But yet people say, I don't have time for God. I don't have time to attend church. I don't have time to assemble. But yet that's all God asks. One year and nine months if you're faithful. So when you look at the big picture, you look at it holistically, that's a real small time frame. But we never know when God's going to call us home. We never know when the appointment comes that we'll never be able to avoid. And so I want to be found being faithful. I'm done with the message. But if I declare it's just a matter of time, I need to be in position when that time of breakthrough comes, that time of deliverance comes, that time of favor is released. When God begins to promote me and exalt me and bless me and bless my family, when God begins to take the church to another level, whatever you're doing in this season, you ought to say, Lord, huh, don't do it without me. I'm done with the message. Huh? But you ought to declare, yes, huh, I've been faithful. And I might not have been as faithful as I should have been, huh, but I'm going to do my best to be more faithful in the future huh, because God is only asking for a small amount of time and when I give God that small amount of time look at the benefit look at the blessings look at how God will bless me supernaturally he will bless me in the city he'll bless me in the field he'll bless me both going and coming he'll make me the head and not the tail a limber and not a bar I'm not going to just talk about the Bible how many people in the church can testify you press your way through when you didn't feel like pressing your way through you assembled when you didn't want to assemble you prayed when you didn't want to pray you read when you didn't feel like reading but every time it got tight somehow God showed up every time it looked bad God made it good every time you got sick according to his will and you really needed a miracle God produced a miracle I 
I want to tell somebody, huh, your labor is not in vain huh, in the Lord. Huh. You want to say, Lord, thank you. Huh. That's what's most important. Huh. Give God a praise right now. Huh, and thank God for the strength. Huh. Thank God for the privilege. Huh. Thank God for the opportunity to serve him. Huh. If you're thankful today, huh, give him your best praise right now. Huh. He inhabits the praises of his people. Huh. When praises go up, huh, blessings come down. Huh. You want to say, thank you. Thank you for waking me up this morning. Thank you for starting me on my way. Thank you for clothing me and retaining in me my right mind. I could have lost my mind. I could have lost everything. But Lord, I'm so thankful that you're a mind regulator. You're a heart fixer. You know how to retain. You know how to restore and give me double for my trouble. God bless y'all today. I am free, praise the Lord, we're free, no longer bound, no more chains holding us, our souls are resting, it's just a blessing. Praise the Lord, hallelujah, we're free. Praise the Lord, hallelujah, we're free. We are free. Praise the Lord, we're free. We've been saved and sanctified, filled with His holiness. Our souls are resting, it's just a blessing. Praise the Lord, hallelujah, we're free. Praise the Lord, hallelujah, we're free, we are free, praise the Lord, we're free, no longer bound, no more chains holding us. Our souls are resting, it's just a blessing, praise the Lord, hallelujah, we're free, praise the Lord, hallelujah, we're free. If you have been blessed by today's program, please visit us at marcusfloydministries.com or call us toll-free at 1-855-788-0299 to partner with this ministry as we influence the world for Christ. All gifts are tax-deductible to the full extent allowed by law.